Welcome, everybody, to the Gazette Radio Hour on Santa Clarita's hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm Doug Sutton with my co-host, John Rogers. And, uh, John, usually we'd go into a lot of joking right now, but today's kind of a serious day. It's Obviously, you know, it's September 11th, and um, you want to say something Yeah, about I've got that. A, I had a buddy who, uh, who wrote what I thought was a pretty poignant poem. Uh, did it about 14 years ago. Um, it's one of those things, you know, it's, it's a generational event is what I call it. Everybody, prior generations know exactly where they were when John Kennedy was assassinated. Um, I remember, I don't know about you, but I remember exactly where I was and exactly what happened, exactly right. what I was doing when I first found out about it. Right. Because um, at first I thought, oh, it's just a, you know, what a weird accident. Right. And then I was in, I was in a car driving to Santa Monica at that, that time in the morning I was going to court. Um, and it was absolutely horrendous. As so, a lawyer. As a lawyer. Okay. Yeah. I was going to cry. Yeah. Yeah. As a lawyer. I thought we weren't going to do the joking thing. No, I know. But I, I appreciate that. All right. So let me, uh, this is a, a poem by my buddy, Kevin Rochelle. Um, it's entitled 9-11 Emergency, America's Best Respond. Terror stalked the morning skyline with kamikaze zeal that stabbed our senses and New York twins with a reality that didn't seem real. Plunging debris, boiling destruction, smoke and ash tsunamis. Panic and pain choked the streets while America's best were responding. Heroes of every shape and size who shared the color of ash staggered through the grim moonscape of multitudes senselessly trashed. On smoldering piles of hope and death, grappling emotions steal away, innocence and precious dreams, while infamy orphans the day. The beginning of fall, a shift in the wind, chased a summer of slow regrets. Petty politics and our own arrogance overlooked our radical guests, who scorned the freedom they enjoyed and planned these barbaric acts, hoping to bruise our national pride, but instead woke righteous wrath. So beware evil doers near and abroad, while we, while we may be shocked and downtrodden, but by God's grace we'll rise to the challenge and bring justice to all bin Ladens. United, is, united we stand, deciding their fall, embracing our flag with a patriot's flurry furry and those sweet liberty mourns today america's best will finish the story i think that about says it all don't you yeah think, that's a good poem yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a pretty good writer yeah but um just a few seconds that we have my concern now is did we learn from that event well, are we going down a road that could lead us to the sort of the same thing happen again maybe worse maybe not but it doesn't seem like uh you know, even after 14 years, we've learned a whole lot from that event. Um, but you never know. Yeah. You know, you never know. It seems like things have progressively gotten worse uh, when it comes to foreign relations. Right. At least. I just know um, the experts in the field are very concerned about the refugees that could come here. And if the terrorists infiltrate that group right. and if they're concerned, I think we should be. Well, let's go back to our normal show. We'll get we'll get Robert Robert Patrick Lewis on okay. later to talk about that. Um, sprinkle in some football. Real important Absolutely. game happened last night. We're excited about that. So, all right, you're listening to Gazette Radio with Doug and John on AM twelve twenty KHTS Santa Cruz hometown station. We'll be back after this. Welcome back, everybody, to the Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John on Santa Cruz's hometown station, AM twelve twenty KHTS. We are the Gazette Radio Hour, the Radio Digest version of the Santa Cruz Gazette. John, hey, there's a you know it was a big game last night, Doug. You didn't even know it, did you? Uh, you mean the uh, um, Patriots and Steelers? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the Grizzlies and the Falcons. Oh, I read about that. Yeah, we've got Coach Dan Kelly from the Golden Valley Grizzlies. Coach, you're on the phone, right? Yeah, I'm right here. How you doing? Hey, good. Coach, man. congratulations. Big win. Hey, thanks a lot. That was a lot of work, huh? <laughs> hey, every day is a lot of work, <laughs> uh, but it was a huge step forward for us as a football team. Uh, do you think it's the biggest win in Golden Valley history? Yeah, it's the biggest win since I've been here, um, and uh, our kids are uh, excited, and and uh, the spirits really high here. Yeah, you guys, you guys really beat him up on that offensive line, didn't you? Yeah, our offensive line played well. You know, uh, uh, Christina Valley was a little undersized. We took advantage of it, and uh, we we look we look really good running the ball last night. Hello. So yeah. you're running back KJ. How do you say his last name? Maduki. Um, Maduke. Yeah. Okay. He rushed for 126 yards, and uh, in the paper, he credited the O line. Yeah, I and mean, the kid that just shows you what type of kid he is. Uh, you know, and uh, great character, hard working kid, very talented. Yeah, that's that's got to be a lot of fun. So, uh, people, uh, Chris and Valley people are like who? I'm like, no, they were defending CIF champions, right? 
They yeah. fourteen and zero last year. I mean, that's that's a yeah. that's a legit win. I mean, you're okay. I, I do have a question though. Uh, what what prompted? Who made the fourth and twelve call that resulted in that twenty six yard touchdown? Well, <laughs> they were, uh, and, and I got to take credit for that. Uh, but the uh, big thing was, uh, you know, they were trying to take Julian Torres out of the game. They were triple teaming him on one side. We singled him up on the one side. Safety was playing too far over, and Alex Escamilla ran a great route up the middle, and they gave it to us to advantage of. That's that was just awesome. And Victor threw, uh, Victor Corona, the quarterback, threw a great ball. Yes, that yeah, was, it was just, a good shot, good throw. Yeah, and and it's not just offense though. You guys got to have a pretty good defense this year. Defense is real fast. They swarmed to the football. They showed last night how we got to the quarterback, and uh, that's what we pride ourselves on is getting to the ball and flying around. Are you having a hard time getting players at Golden Valley? Nope. We've got a great squad out. Uh, we've got 46 on the varsity. We've got 42 on the JV. Uh, you know, we've got thirty over 30 on the freshmen. So the numbers are up, and, hey, everything's going well. Hey, Coach, when you took over the job, you must have known Golden Valley's uh, reputation and the struggles they've had over the years since the school opened. And you were still willing to take on that challenge? And I assume Absolutely. you thought you could get the job yeah. done? Yeah, I mean, that's what you, you get into coaching for is, is the challenge. And uh, I accepted the challenge, and, I, you know, uh, I'm still accepting it and working hard every day. Um, and, it, and it's you know, when you win a game like we did last night, Hey, it all pays off, you know, uh, all the hard work and, and stuff. Yeah, we're going to take our lumps and our, we're going to have some ups and downs, but the last night was definitely an up. Yeah, I think, I, think you got a, uh, I think you got at least one victory in the Foothill League this year. <laughs> How's that? I'm making that? I already made that prediction. I'm making it again. I think it might be two. Uh, well, hey, we, like I, I told the papers last night, so we're going to take one game at a time. And, yeah. You know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna celebrate this victory, and then we're all focused on the Hills for next week. That's right. That's another good game, isn't it? Yeah, Vera Hill's a very good football team. Yeah. So, Coach, um, I haven't heard through the grapevine that the uh, the morale and the atmosphere is all turned around at your program. I assume you'd agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah, no more doorsteps. Absolutely. No more doorsteps. Well, you know, hey, um, like I said last year, I, I thought our, I, I thought we competed. You know, we, we didn't get as many wins as we wanted, but we competed in all of our games, and and that's our goal this year. You know, the, even last week when we lost to Royal, our kids competed all the way to the final buzzer. So, yeah. hey, that's that's all I expect out of them, and 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 that's what that's what our goal is. That's it. And and you're kind of a young team too, still. Yeah, you know, it's it's a good mix. You know, uh, with with some returners and some newcomers coming up from the JV and stuff like that. But it's 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 a good team. Folks, we're talking to uh, the head coach of the Golden Valley Grizzlies, Dan Kelly, on the Gazette Radio Hour. Uh, Golden Valley had a great win. I assume it's an upset, right? Yeah, how could it not be? Uh, well, we went in to win it, so it's it's what we wanted. You yeah. know, uh, obviously they, they were fifteen and zero going. You know, from their, they had won their first game against Verdugo Hill. So to knock off a team that's fifteen and zero and a section title team, it's big. Hey, Coach uh, Dan, what uh, real quick, what was your background in coaching before Golden Valley? Um, you know, I started off young. Um, I coached at Sylmar High School for 10 years under Jeff Engelman. Oh, there you go. Um, and, uh, you know, we won a Division One title there. And then we moved on to Arlita High School. We opened that school in 2006. Um, I was there four years as an assistant coach for HIT, for Jeff Engelman, and then I took over the program for three years. And then I arrived here at Golden Valley in 2014. So this is my 21st year of coaching. Wow. All right. Yeah. So, Coach, you got Agora Hills, and then the week after that you start league, right? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my daughter's... Well, no, we got, we got Hawthorne. Oh, that's right. You got Hawthorne, then league. That's right. My we daughter... Have a bi- we have, yeah, we have a bye. Yeah, my, have- yeah, my daughter's a student there, so, so I, get, uh, I get to go to all the... She's an ASB, so I get to go to all the games. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll definitely stop by and say hi, because I'm excited. I think you guys... It's always been fun... Uh, it's always been a great environment to go watch a game. I, hopefully, you guys will get lights and you can actually have some home games. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. That would yeah, be the way to do it. Awesome. Nah, we'll have to work yeah. on that one. But All right, yeah. Coach Dan Kelly, Golden Valley Grizzlies. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. All right, thanks for having me on, guys. All right, good luck the rest of the time. season. Man. All right, you know, that, that's fun, Doug. When a, when a team like Golden Valley just gets you know hammered for so long and they come up with a decent win and yeah. you can have the coach on and just I'm sit really there and happy go, you know? for him. yeah and it's and it, like i said you can go to your canyons you can go to your hearts you, you know even valencia to a certain extent it kind of gets yeah over boring. routine not boring but just kind of routine because they, they it's, it's it's they get routine 
But I think, you know, you've got a you got a young upstart, a whippersnapper that comes in, and you expect them to do well at first, or you want them right. to do well at first, and then they don't. Right. And then suddenly it's like the little engine they could. Now they're now they, yeah. they, they might start to push some people around. Good for them. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. But uh, you know something I was thinking, you, you you said something earlier when we were talking about uh nine eleven mm-hmm. remembrance. You had to bring up current situation. You had to bring that up with the, with the refugees. So explain to me your your take on this again. Just well, so I'm aware. I, it's not just refugees. It's it's also the Iran nuclear deal. I I just it just seems like the folks on the left. I don't know how to say they're just inviting again. I mean, back then we had no clue. We weren't. America wasn't aware of that the degree of terrors, it, terrorism that could happen that happened on 9-11. But now we're very aware of it. We know how evil these folks are. We know they hate us. They hate our guts. And they're going to try to bring us down. They they would have already done another 9-11 if they could. And credit to us that we've been able to prevent how do you, it. How do you think we can stop them? I mean, we stopped them. Well, one thing, I, 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 don't, I think it's impossible to stop completely. But you don't bring in 10,000 refugees from Syria and not have a, an effective way to screen them to know how many bad apples have infiltrated the I, refugees. I, see, I, I don't think there is an effect. Well, let's, let's, let's talk to our national correspondent, Robert Bush Lewis. Yeah, I, we should have him. I mean... Hopefully he's yeah, here. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, I'm going to sound really silly. Going, let's talk to our <laughs> national correspondent, and then there's crickets. Um, so, Robert, do you really think that? I mean, okay, let's 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 go back to the very beginning. What do you think America has learned since 9/11? And I'm not going to say 9/11, 2000, but 9/11 in right. the last 14 years. What have we really learned? Uh, you know, unfortunately, I don't think we've learned enough. Uh, we are very much the ADHD squirrel. Uh, <laughs> hey, he's talking about me. That, yeah, I mean, that's, that's our problem, is that we tend to, to bring something in, we make a big fuss about it, and it's the most important thing in the world for us until something else comes up, and then another bright, shiny object comes along, and it's our center of attention, you know? And yeah. So what do you think of their Kardashians? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the problem. Yeah, of course, the, the, the Kardashians start falling out, and of course, Bruce Jenner goes oh, to get my the chop chop, and now gracious. they're, they're going to be right back in it. But I think that's the problem, is that, you know, even though it's out of the media attention, we're still losing soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're still losing a lot of them. There's still all of my friends that are still active. A lot of them are still deployed. And it's something that people forget, like, because it's not on the news every day. They just think it doesn't happen anymore because Obama says that, you know, we've, we've ceased combat operations in Iraq, that we're finished there, or that... You know, because Afghanistan's on the news every night that we're finished there. And it's it's absolutely not true. And the thing that scares me the most is, you know, we're seeing this uh, news starting to leak that the intelligence was doctored, that they've been kind of forcing these intelligence guys to doctor their reports, to toe the Obama line that, that ISIS really isn't anything to be worried about. And that's how it got so out of control, because Obama said, we don't want people to know about this, and that they put all these reports out saying it wasn't a big deal, and then all of a sudden it, you know, flew off the handle. This is the same exact thing that happened in Iraq, you know, for several deployments. You know, we worked, special forces, we worked directly with local units and local soldiers, and we would have to send up these weekly reports saying how they're doing, and we would send up reports saying, hey, these guys are scared, they can't shoot, they're horrible soldiers, they've got no backbone or anything, right. and we'd get a message coming back saying, no, you got to send a, a, a report saying they're ready to go and they're prepared for the hand <laughs> Okay, well, they're not. I don't yeah. care. This is what it's got to say. And it's the same exact thing. And it, that's the pro- it's, what insanity, doing the same thing over and over and right. expecting yeah. a different response, right? They're doing the same exact thing. And somehow they expect a different... And I saw them do it in Afghanistan. You know, they did it to us in Iraq, they did it to in Afghanistan, and now they're doing it with Intel and ISIS. And it's the same thing happens every time. I don't understand how somebody doesn't figure it out. Folks, we're talking to Robert Patrick Lewis, uh, author, um, Green Beret, and what else is he? All-around good guy. Yeah, he won't tell us what he's doing now, so we can't say that. <laughs> anyway, but Robert, what do you think? Do you? He could it, tell you, but he would have to kill you, Doug. Yeah, of course. Hey, Doug, actually, Robert, could you tell him? Because that would be really good, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> <be> the John <laughs> Show. <laughs> um, we Look have got... <laughs> we have got ex security guys, national security guys, saying that bringing in ten thousand refugees from Syria is asking for nothing but trouble. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah they've already caught. Uh, I saw a thing. I don't know if it's really been made public yet, but I'm on a lot of secret 
call it secret squirrel groups, and I've seen some video of them actually finding a lot of uh, weapons and things that were hidden among some of these refugees that were coming uh, coming across in ships and things already. Um, yeah, it's nothing but trouble. And that's, again, part of me either thinks this administration is completely ignorant and the dumbest administration that's ever existed, but that can't be true. Obama, he's got a uh, a degree from Yale and a, a master's degree from Columbia, right? So he can't yeah. be that stupid, right? He's not stupid, which makes me think he's crazy like a fox. And that's, you know, a lot of people call you kooks and crazy tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist nut jobs, but in I, all honesty, how could you say this sounds like a good idea? I would never call you that, any of those things. But good. you know something? Okay, here's, here's, as an author, not to put on your author hat for a second, here's the next book, okay? Al Qaeda is ridiculously smart. And they get somebody to run for U.S. president, somebody, an unknown, okay? And, and then they elect the first black president who's actually an operative. Oh. Ooh, yeah. Good I book. <laughs> Good book, okay? I just want to be mentioned. I just want to be, like, in the movie or something when it, it writes I mean, Well, I think you get sued. I mean, you get sued by the Manchurian candidate, right? You get yeah, good sued point. By that. <sighs> it's already been done, but it's, right. you know, and that's the thing. Anytime you even start to bring it up, you're automatically called a oh, crazy right. lunatic, yeah. paranoid schizophrenic. But in all honesty, like, how does it sound like a good idea? How does any of this stuff sound like a good idea? Telling intelligence, telling the CIA and all these different intelligence analysts to doctor stuff to make a threat look smaller than it actually is, how does that sound like a good idea? Blindly letting 10,000 Muslim immigrants in without checking them, how does that sound like a good idea? Like, on the anniversary of 9-11, with all this stuff that's going on, you ask what we learned, if this sounds like a good idea to anybody out there, then we haven't learned it. Hey Robert, along the same lines, what doesn't that go with the Iranian n- nuclear deal? This thing makes me nuts. All starting with the four hostages. If it, if I would have had my way, those four hostages would have been out of there before we even begin the negotiations. And well, then all this, you could go one item after another. Why it doesn't make sense? You know, there's a very interesting point that I had never thought of, and I haven't heard really brought up very much. I was speaking with a friend of mine earlier who's a big institutional-level investor, and so he's very tied into what's going on, commodities pricing and in the markets Mm. and things like that. And I was asking him about that, and he said, well, you're not thinking about the oil. What are you talking about? He said, Mm -hmm. well, Iranian oil is about to hit the market. They don't care what it sells at because they have a lot of it, and they want to to become the kind of the oil dealer for the world, right? So they're going to undersell everybody else they can because Mm -hmm. I don't think they're, they're a member of OPEC. And so they're going to come out, and they're just going to sell it. They're going to sell it at whatever price they want. And so that's another, you look at the fact that our politicians are bought and sold. You know, they might as well. I like that joke, but it's true. They should be mm-hmm. wearing around NASCAR driver suits and, and have <laughs> the logos of all their biggest uh, their biggest lobbyists on, on their jacket because it's what it is at the end of the day. Oil, oil, it puts a ton of money into these thieves' pockets. So, and I honestly don't hear it, but I think that's gonna, that's a big part of the argument. That's probably a big reason this happened, because somebody greased these dirtbags' palms, and they just said, we don't care about anything else, we're getting a payday, so yeah, let's do the deal. All right, so what you're saying is go short on oil futures. All right, <laughs> let me write that down. Hang on a second. <laughs> well, that's, there was an analyst that came out today and said oil's going to go to $20 right, next yeah. year. Wow. <clears throat> short oil futures. There you go. Yeah, which, you know, if you look at the macro consequences of that, right, the whole theory that, you know, there, there's a lot of conspiracy theories that the reason oil is going so low right now is because so- the Saudis are trying to just destroy American innovation. The fracking, yeah. Of, yeah, fracking, all these things that we've done, if they make it cost prohibitive, so if they bring the price down so much that you don't make any money on fracking, they, they right. just get rid of that threat. But Robert, how do you how, how do you make a deal with somebody? The leader leads crowds in chanting "Death to America, Death to Israel," and then he just made a speech this week and he said Israel will not make it another twenty five years. How do you trust somebody like that? Please Again, explain like, it to me. If, if it sounds like a good idea to anybody out there, you're not paying attention. You know that's the thing. Any one of these Colin Powell would like to say hi. Argued on their own, but Did you, you put all these different things together and. How can you not see something? Like, honestly, somebody's either a complete idiot, which we know he's not, or they're crazy like a fox. Yeah. Well, Colin Powell liked the Iran nuke deal. Yeah, he did. That, yeah, that was a little well, surprising. I don't know. And that's, again, like, I had a lot of respect for Colin Powell, but there's, I don't know who's paying him at this point. Yeah. I don't know exactly what he's doing. So, again, you got to, 
you've got to play follow the money in almost any of these situations, and a lot of these people are really good at hiding the money. So what you're so, saying is yesterday when those Democrats in the Senate were up t- touting the deal, and uh, you think they had motivations other than that's how they really feel. Yeah, of course. I mean, what politician do you know anymore that has any motivation besides money? You know, or their own self-interest. I mean, it doesn't, it's just, it, the first time I went to Africa, I was just blown away by the outright corruption that was out in the middle of the streets, and then I came home and I realized it's just as bad here. We're no better than Africa. Our corruption is just called lobbyists, right? We call it by yeah. a different name. And it's, it is, it's, it's insane that people still believe, you know, there are some good politicians out there. Um, I thought Boner was going to be different. I remember the first time I saw him, I saw him on, uh, the news or something, and he started crying when he was talking about his kids getting yeah. all choked up. And I really went, wow, okay, I think I like that guy. <clears throat> now, a couple years later, what do we got? You know, I think it's just this ingrained system that even if one gets in there and it's a good, he's a good person, I think he either just becomes so browbeat by the system or he can't get anything done trying to actually be a good person that you just fall, step in line, and just become as corrupt and worthless as the rest of them. Let me ask you this. What about Donald Trump? Does he fall in that category? You know, I still, I can't get an accurate beat on him, but I do feel like at least he, he, he says what he feels, <clears throat> and a lot of people hate that, but a lot of people call him crass and a bigot and whatever, but at least he doesn't judge what's going to come out of his mouth by its, you know, PC appeal or ratings or, you know, well, ratings, okay, that's probably... More yeah, that's not really true. <laughs> <clears throat> but he doesn't say something because he thinks it's going to sound good, or he's not saying it just to appeal to a certain demographic. I think he's actually saying the way he feels. It just so happens that he feels the way a lot of people do, you know? And it has been said a lot that the conservatives have spent a very long time, a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of effort in kind of shaping their constituents right. to see things and think a certain way, right? There's a reason Fox has beautiful They're just the shepherds. women. They're just the shepherds. <laughs> We're just sheep. Why does Fox have beautiful blonde women? Who cares? Yeah, it does, man. I mean, they have gorgeous <laughs> women. You know, they have lots of flashy lights. Everything's red. Like, they're going for a specific thing. Of course. And Donald Trump is the epitome of what that is. If he was a hot blonde bombshell in a short skirt, I think he would be Fox News in a nutshell. He's right? really not, you know, there. <laughs> I know. His I, hair's I, I real, though. <laughs> His hair is real. <laughs> well, Robert, you've, 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 I want to thank you for uh, cheering us up. Appreciate it, as usual. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I'm Although I'm going to be rich because I'm, I'm going to go short oil futures right now. <laughs> yeah. Hey. All right. Thanks oh, for your time, Robert. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right, man. We'll talk to you next week. Robert Patrick sure. Lewis, everybody. Author, Green Beret, all around good guy, and bastion of cheerfulness. I think we're going to add that to his title. All right. You listen to the Gazette Radio with Doug and John on AM 1220 KHCS, Santa Cruz Hometown Station. When we come back and we talk like football or something. Yes. Fun? All right. There you go.